everyone. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I'm your host, JP, joined as always by the other host, that guy, Nick Martin, who's making a rare appearance in public. How are you, bud? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic, man. We are doing a live and in-person episodic podcast of DadCast today at our buddy, our friend, our partner, Mr. Joe Moxley of Moxley Media. How are you, Joe? You're doing great, man. Thanks for having us. Appreciate Absolutely. That. We are inside Moxley Media, uh, where they do amazing work. They print shirts. They make stickers. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. Check them out, moxleymedia.com. Shirts like the one you're wearing. Yeah, literally. This shirt that I'm wearing right now, the Dad Life 24-7, 365, you can get one at dadcast.co right now. Print it by Mr. Joe Moxley himself. Amazing. Today on the show, man, we're stoked. We got singer, songwriter. He's traveled a great distance to play a show right here in our neck of the woods tonight in Medford, Mr. Seth Brown. How are you, sir? I'm great, guys. Thanks for having us out today. Absolutely. And joining, uh, I always save the best for last, man, the lovely wife of Seth Brown, uh, Desiree, otherwise known as Des. Yeah. How are you today? I love your hat. I'm good. Thanks so much. Me too, actually. All right, all right. I found that. You did. He finds all my cool stuff. My hat, my moccasins, everything. Nice. He is. Not even on purpose. Nice. So, Seth. story, Joe is actually my fashion designer. (laughs) (laughs) Joe's been hooking me up with cool clothes as long as I've known him. He's been doing that for 20 years for me. Exactly. If I, I have literally a section in my closet that is all... Old school. I mean, we're talking about to Lucky Brand days and friggin' it just, there's so much Joe Moxley. Uh, oh, and yeah. like, there's, I mean, before I even became a dad, I've got shirts. I don't even fit in them. I, tattoos are good for your soul. Yeah. I found that lying on my floor the other day. That's we a good one. That one yeah. You I, just I, told I, me about that a yep. few days ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't worn it in 10 years. Oh, crazy. I don't know how it ended up on my floor or where it even came from. I'm going to blame the wife for that one, but, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> I was going to chill back, but it's just not comfy. I'm too of an upright, excited type guy. All right, Seth Brown. So, so, <laughs> check it out, Seth. The premise of DadCast is uh, two dads, Nick and I, who talk to other celebrity dads about being dads, the path, the journey, the, the beginnings, the middles, uh, when the end may pertain, all that good stuff. But I heard talking off the air that you are not a dad in the sense of the word where you have birthed a human, Correct. I have certainly not birthed a human. Okay, well, not physically. <laughs> yeah, or you haven't had a, a human birthed, you know, I have not been, with a partner. I have not been in any of that process. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what we do have, two cats. They're yes. Like two little boys, they're little brothers we adopted out of Sedona about a year ago. And uh, we named one of them Mingus after the Mingus Mountains in, in northern Arizona. Right. And then we named the other one Muggs because he's got this white ring. It looks like he took a big glass of milk, you know. Uh-huh. They've been our road cats. They tour with us. They've been on the road with us solid for a year. They've lived in more states than most people I know. So you're a cat dad. I'm a cat dad. And that's, that's what's going to it's going to suffice for today. Now, granted, you don't need to be a dad to be on Dadcast. We all know this. So all good, man. Welcome to Oregon. Tell me about uh, your musical stylings, man. If you were to define yourself, and I know that's hard sometimes, but if you were to label you as a certain genre, what would that be? I think we've landed on uh, on folk rock. Folk rock, all right. So my my music is very it's a very uh, storytelling personal music style, but it's it's definitely got more of a rock and roll Tom Petty ish vibe and edge to it than maybe say contemporary country for example. Okay. So I've I've been influenced my whole life by folk bands and classic rock, and so those really play an element in my writing as well. All right. Yeah. Now before we got started, you were rapping too. Yeah, like I'm, I wasn't disappointed. I keep that for my closest of friends. <laughs> <laughs> he was what I was. I was in my zone setting up. Definitely wasn't Eminem up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to more on the folks, the folks style. Big, but. And and where have you traveled from? Where's home base? Yeah, so crazy enough, I grew up in Eastern Oregon in a little town. It was the first dot com, and I think the only dot com city to ever exist. But the town was called Halfway Oregon. And the, when, when the internet was popping in the 90s for the first time, they renamed that little town for like a year, Half.com. Hmm. And uh, I grew up in this town, it was 200 people in the middle of nowhere, out on the Idaho border, um, Eagle Cap Wilderness, God's country up there, grew up on a big buffalo ranch, oh, wow. 350 head of American bison, literally at our back door growing up. More bison than people. 100%. Easy. Like 200 people, 300 bison, and then everybody was cattle ranchers. So. 
really cool childhood, grew up with a huge family, a bunch of siblings on a farm. We raised goats, and uh, my family was all musical. So growing up in our house, it was like 17 different kinds of instruments throughout our house. Everything from accordions to guitars and pianos and stringed instruments and horns and everything. Musical parents, musical siblings. So I started playing when I was just a little kid. It was carried through my whole life. And so now that's what we do full time. We when are. when you say big family, they don't know what you're, <coughs> they don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain so, what big family well, is. Got, Thanks, got, Joe Moxley. I've got seven seven sisters, six older sisters, and a little sister. So the, wow. all the siblings are from the same mom and dad, and no twins or adoptions. And then I have eleven big brothers too. <laughs> so the? same parents, same mom and dad. Wow, so Nick, pay, pay attention. I know this is where you're heading. No, no. We're you know, I'm not a dad, but I have to say I have a pretty amazing dad. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so they had 19 kids, and I'm the 18th. I'm the 12th son. And um, all of my siblings and my parents are still alive. And 12. My oldest sibling, my youngest sibling, one of the middle ones, somewhere from the middle batch, and my parents are all going to be at the show tonight. Really? Here tonight? Here. Yeah. Tonight, here in Medford, Oregon. None of them live here. They're all traveling in. Is the seventh yeah. son going to be here tonight? Ooh. No, no, actually, no. Other okay, because I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm freaking out a little bit inside here, okay? <laughs> if, if the seventh son, what's his name? Oh, hang on. Okay, so we got <laughs> Pete, Tom, Jake, Steve, Sam, Mike, Joe. 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 Joe okay. What? If Joe, yeah, there you go. If Joe has seven sons, the world is going to end. You understand that, right? The seventh son of a seventh son. Oh, help me out. Yeah, so, so just let him know. You know, let's just stay single, Joe. <laughs> No, no pressure. No, pre no pressure, but the world depends on you. Yeah, yeah, seriously, it's, it's, it's been written, it shall be done. At least that's what Iron Maiden said. Anywho. <laughs> so, yeah. So if anyone got that reference, I'm thoroughly impressed. No, but, uh, no. Nobody here. Nope. Uh, it's an Iron Maiden song, man. It's actually the name of the album, Seventh Son of a Seventh, and it's neither here nor there. So tell us about the show tonight. What, what can we expect? Where are we playing? Actually, you know what? Before that, we'll get into that. I'm kind of curious how uh, Joe and you hooked up and linked, yeah. and, and how did you, you know, how did you end up coming out here? 100. percent Yeah, it all starts actually with Desi. Um, I'll summarize real quick. We sold our home at the end of 2018, and we just knew we had a hit reset on life. Right. And so we quit the corporate world. We quit our jobs. We jumped in an Astro van, and we hit the road with thinking we were going to be uh, YouTube, you know, van life YouTube people. Okay. So that within like five months, that just faded out. We're like, this is the worst, hardest thing. We have no idea what we're doing. Uh, but during that time of travel, we were just traveling all over the country, living in this van. And uh, I started writing songs again. And that just really came back to life in me. And when we landed, we basically traveled for a year, ran out of money, and chose Southern Oregon to start over again. And before we went out and got our jobs back and started life again, we were sitting at this dive bar in Rogue River, Oregon. Okay. And Cedarwood, we saw this dude playing music on this little stage, and, and uh, she looked at me and she goes, man, if they're paying that guy, I bet somebody would pay you to play. And we kind of just got this wild idea that we were gonna just try to make it playing music and keep traveling. So she started <coughs> calling every place in Oregon that's ever booked music from coffee shops to bakeries to bars to wineries and Joe's crew over at Anchor yep. got our horrible little EPK that was like voice recordings to like <laughs> you know just <laughs> just like horrible and uh, they're like yeah dude we want to give you a shot come play music at our winery and they were one of the first bar, bars restaurants businesses in, in southern Oregon to give us a shot when we first decided this is what we want to go after and we went in there and we played, and, and uh, it wasn't very good, honestly. But Joe saw loved it. our potential, I loved and he it. just believed in us right <laughs> away. Too. Yeah. And he said, he goes, where's your merch, man? And I was like, like I'm, I'm nobody, and I think merch is cheesy, to be honest with you. And he's like, okay, uh-huh. So the next time... It's I'm, not something you say to Joe Moxley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. John I accepted. Like, <laughs> so I had no idea. So we, we show up to play our first gig at his winery, and we walk in. And everybody on his staff, including him, has my face this big on their <laughs> shirts. Yep. And it was so cool, man. Like all the, you know, he just went full Moxley mode and it was badass. So I saw that and he's like, you sure you don't want me to make you merch? And I'm like, just send me some options. I'm sure I'll approve them all. You know? And ever since, man, he's made his tons of rad merch, hats, stickers, 
Baby onesies. shirts, onesies, yeah. hat. I mean, God, there's like a list of rats. You guys got so. your own wine. We have our own. We might have our own wine. You send us out on the road, or we we took off and hit the road at the end of was it 2020, and uh, we were heading for Sarasota, Florida, or so we thought. And he sent us with like two cases of wine with my face on it. And all He's like, figure out a way to make some money with this if you can. I was like, I have no idea. It's gonna work. Was that all the expired wine, Joe? Yeah, re- right. Did you yeah. relabel like, you know, it? Else, yeah. You know, we could just drink our way to Florida. And so- my, my thing when I met them that night, first of all, you know, you hear lots of music and concerts, but there's something when somebody has that, you, no matter what you do, you end up just, mm-hmm. what? You get drawn in and start listening. Mm-hmm. And after it was a, a great performance, you start talking to somebody. And when they're better than their music, personality-wise, soul-wise, and you connect, you're like, this is a winning combination. Right. And then hearing Desi's story of literally quitting her job as an ER nurse. Yeah, I see you, ER. To, to hit the road with her husband and go off this career was, I'm like, wow, you guys are like committed. Yeah. It's more than just like playing a local gig. They're, making this their life, their yeah. living. And I was, I bought in instantly. That's awesome. I would too. Now, is the YouTube channel still up? It is, but a lot of the videos have been taken down, I'm not gonna lie. There is a band tour video. What's the name of the YouTube channel? It's now Seth Brown Entertainment. Okay. Uh, there used to be the Bag of Browns. Oh, you went there. Oh, that's oh, okay. I like that. Oh, you went there, damn it. I'm sorry, oh, no. you know. Smash the table. It was so, real, it was real. Anyways, it's summer still there. I'm, I'm, carry on. I gotta find this. I gotta <laughs> this find this channel. Hilarious. Oh gosh. Um, I do this every time because YouTube is like my, we're much more successful, the podcast, uh-huh. on almost everything right. else other than YouTube. And as you know, YouTube, for lack of a better way to put it, is a fickle bitch. It's a, it's a, it's one. so mm-hmm. challenging because you don't need to subscribe to anyone's stuff to watch That's their it. stuff. And you know, it's gotta be good, it's gotta be engaging, it's gotta yeah. be good content for people to subscribe. And we're, you know, it's taken me years to get to where we're at now, but it's starting to, we're pushing 10,000 subs here. So, oh, but, and that's, mm-hmm. yeah, but that's wow. the look, you know, this is the bottom end of all of our other stuff. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. so anytime someone says they have a YouTube channel, I have to check it out. We I actually don't see where say we have at. a YouTube channel almost ever anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, the most impressive thing we had that we had Emerson Hart from Tonic on last week, and his mom has a YouTube channel with 374,000 subscribers. Yeah, yeah. No way. I'm like, what does she's she, amazing. What is yeah, her content? Her, yeah. Well, I, I, she's I, also I, super famous. She you know, that helps. Toys yeah. from no, she, uh, some random she, she gives advice yeah. or something. I can't, I can't yeah. remember exactly. It's like she just gives advice or something. Right. Wow. But just, yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Seth yeah. Brown so, Entertainment. Yeah, so Here we go. You got to come on the podcast. Get your mom on. Right, <laughs> gotta know what she's doing. Uh, see, I stopped talking and everything just, well, just shuts down. Oh, oh, I want okay. you to see me like, okay, all right, what? this is amazing. They are, they are watching the reaction, so here we go. This is the reaction we got, we got to skip. We got, I, I'm trying to go to this okay, here we go. View, this YouTube, like just awesome. reaction. 1,260 subs, give or take. You got hey, your banner is amazing, <laughs> and uh, right off the bat, I mean, just from a simple looking at the front page on a mobile device, I mean, you're already way ahead of the game. It, and nice. Desiree Brown, good everybody. Job. She's, it's good stuff. Now, I'm, I'm gonna uh, dive into that inner. I would like to show you in public and live, that is a brand new subscribe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you know, you need to return the favor once we're off the air, but, you. we'll and you're gonna need to if you wanna see this episode because there, there are private subscription only. Exactly. Not true, not even close to being true. Thing. But so if you're not subscribed, still go watch. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. oh, And I also need to point out, um, this is not a paid promotion for Moxley Media, this episode, it, although it really feels like it. All right, so Seth Brown, you could play a show with any artist, living or dead, that you have not previously played a show with, who would it be? Yeah. Oh. I would have to say Tom Petty, but I think it would be really fun to jam with Aerosmith. Oh, they're still playing? <laughs> Dude, let's go to Vegas. I can get you in. Let's go. I mean, they're still alive, so that kind of... They are literally they're yeah. playing a yeah. residency. You're going to put it out there. It might be an easier chance it's to play with them. It's a little easier sell if they're still yeah. breathing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Might get in a lot of trouble to play with Tom Petty. (laughs) Morally, oh, there's my daughter. You know, of course, I tell her I'm doing a podcast at this time, not to call, social call. 
Um, should we say hi to her? Yeah, thank yep. you. Yeah. I always like to embarrass my daughter when I'm in the middle of a podcast episode and she calls. <laughs> this is Dad. And there, there she is, everyone. Say hi to Avery. Hey, hey Avery. Yeah, Dad cast is you. Yeah. <laughs> hi, baby. I'll call you back when I'm done. I love you. Aw. <laughs> How cute. Um, Welcome to interruption. Aerosmith has a residency at uh, the Park MGM. In, yeah. uh, in Vegas, and they're playing three nights a week through December. Have you seen them recently? I. What's your definition of seen? Did I watch them perform, right. or did I see them literally as they're walking through the casino and the restaurant that I eat at? Because yes to that second yes part. Yes to the second one, yeah. but no concert. I haven't seen the concert. I did yeah. see Aerosmith many, many, many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, but does the dude look like a lady? He does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks like everybody's grandma. Hey, he does. <laughs> Crazy little uh, story there. When we lived in Nashville, where we met. She was getting her nails done at some little strip mall nail place, and up rolls this huge uh, Rolls Royce. And Steven jumps out and walks in and sits like two chairs down from her, and she's sitting there like, um, <laughs> <laughs> Steven's getting his nails done for the Grammys tonight, or whatever it was. The, it was I didn't kind bother, of but I did take a selfie with his car when I left. <laughs> <laughs> he's I, he's really gracious for the most part. I mean, getting what he's gonna do? He can't move, so you should have went and got yeah, that right, selfie. Like, you yeah. should have been like, <laughs> "Big hey, Steven. Right time, right place." Um, <laughs> you're tacky. You got nothing. <laughs> I've interviewed Joe Perry before. Oh, right on. Um, See, he, he's the unsung hero of Arizona, Oh yeah, in my opinion. In, in, yeah. The, the show Hollywood Vampires, you know, he's so a member good. with Johnny Depp and 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 friggin' Dude, he's so under Alice Cooper yeah. and the Leo Matt brothers. Sorum yeah. and yeah, is there's Beck part of that or is Beck and Johnny doing something separate? They're separate, doing something separate. Yeah. Gotcha. But those were man. I mean, are you going through Nevada anytime soon within the next two months <laughs> by any chance? We'll no, we'll be there in the spring, year. though. Okay. Yeah. Well, they will be done with their residency. I was saying, if you were, oh, yeah. I, I'm not even kidding. I could probably pull some strings and awesome. make that wish of yours happen. Well, but should we go to Nevada? Yeah, I mean, let's go. It good. might be worth it. it. Turns out our what life are you doing is tomorrow. Over. We're going to share. <laughs> I, I'll, dude, I'll go. Yeah, let's go. I literally have a suite booked for the next four days, and I haven't decided if I'm going or not. Meet me in Vegas. Tomorrow, yeah. I'm deciding if I'm going to go with 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 Jesse or not. Yeah. So I mean, hey, I like it. it's an option. But when we're done with the podcast, let's let's share info. We'll dance, we'll dance I'll make a couple idea. phone calls, yeah. and and if it if it can happen, it's got to happen, right? Well, we'll we'll. Revert, I mean, you we got to figure something out. We got to. I mean, Joe's going. Maybe. We're all going. We're gonna watch Seth. Hopefully, you know, get on stage and play a little duet with Stephen Tyler and Aerosmith. How, how amazing would that be? We we'll cancel the private shows if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cancel that, and for anyone watching or listening to this episode, sometime in the future, it is currently October 2022. Say this is four years from now and it never happened. Man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I, I tried. I probably ran my mouth and it didn't wasn't able to happen. But I I, I know the friggin' owners of that that. That area and um, on the plus side, and the know, restaurant. I also know Joe Perry's publicist, so we can. Oh, well, there you go. We can make, it we can make things else, happen. A boy can dream. All right. Yep. Now yeah, shifting yeah. gears. It's, I, it's not a bad thing to show up with your guitar and like set up right in front of the stage. Like, oh, whoops. Just I'm walk. Here. You know, <laughs> you and a ladder. No one stops you if you have a ladder. Exactly. You just walk and in a, the joint and a lunchbox. I gotta be honest. Just, when we lived in Nashville, there was a couple of bars that were really tough to get into, and. Uh, I was tipped off by another local musician that all you really had to do is show up with an empty guitar case and be like, where's the green room? Exactly. I gotta be honest. Yeah, yeah. I got into some green rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I mean, I'm gonna jump in here because I know the connections for everybody. He also in Nashville uh, knows and knew a lot of upcoming artists. Yeah. Was roommates or house. Mates with well, a short one. time lived with them before we got married and yeah. stuff like that. So cool. Cool stories that way. Uh, Russell Dickerson. Oh, sweet. Yeah, he was a good good friend of ours. Kaylee and Russ were good buddies. He sang at our wedding. He did sing at our wedding. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. How long ago was the wedding? Uh, 2015, so whatever the yeah. is on that. Seven years? <laughs> <laughs> and there's no Seven kids yet? Years. What's going on? We I'm going to get personal. Fabulous Browns on purpose. Here's the thing. When you Purple? have 18 siblings. Valid points. How many nieces and nephews? How many nieces and nephews do I have? Direct and like I think we're close to five greats. Oh my wow. goodness! So we have plenty to love on. Right, I got you. And you can get it. Yeah, you can give them back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Chill. And you never know that a prophecy of the seventh son. It could be the twelfth son having the fifth. You know, we don't want to push exactly. anything. So, <laughs> very just, very valid point. Okay, all right. Um, 
But yeah, no, our lifestyle lends really, really well to not having kids. So we're just rolling that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, where, where have you guys been in this last month? Okay. Oh, last month. Take it, darling. Oh, Boom. gosh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Gosh, so October, really, we've just been in Illinois. But we left from Colorado September 4th, and we've been all the way Nebraska, Iowa, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, yeah, just, Oregon. Technically back to Colorado for a layover yeah. on our way. Yeah. So, so, I mean, they're hitting the road hard right now and seeing some towns. And, and nice. some tunes. Yeah. Tunes and new new tunes, new towns. Seen some things. So have you reached out to the old friends like Russell to see if you could do like an opening gig with him on his tour? Um, no, I've uh, I have a weird love hate relationship with Nashville and okay. Um, is the hate part of it the humidity? Because Jesus, it, it's a little <laughs> sticky down there. No, for me. So I, I grew up writing songs, right? I wrote uh-huh. the first song when I was ten years old. And I wrote songs pretty consistently until I moved to Nashville in, I was like 24 or five. And Nashville writes their music as a team, Mm -hmm. which is cool, but it's a co-writing culture. Right. So you get in there and and they'll basically say, everybody bring your ideas and we're gonna put you in a room with four or five other guys, (laughs) Mm -hmm. take the best hook, the most catchy idea, let's run it through the, the structure. And then, well, let's pump out hits. And that's what you mm-hmm. do in Nashville. And I, I tried really hard for about a year to get into the swing of that. And I could not do it. And eventually, I just stopped writing altogether. And then eventually, I just stopped playing. And I went like mm-hmm. four years and just was done. Yeah, I've got another buddy, Noah. He's the guitar player for Brett Young. Same mm-hmm. thing. He just, he loves writing really, music, uh, playing and stuff. He had his own band on the side that was amazing. And mm-hmm. then just got burnt out with the whole get in a room with four or five people with different ideas, yeah. too many cooks in the kitchen kind of I feel like I feel like they're, you know, Nashville's doing a lot of things that work, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. But everybody is just wired differently. And I found that for me, I'm just wired different way. For example, when we got on the road, I started writing songs. I wrote 30 songs that I'm proud of in the first year. Nice. And then since then, I, I mean, I'm, pushing, I don't know, 50 or 50 something new songs in the last two and a half years. Um, and those are songs about real life, about real experiences, about sitting around campfires with strangers we met on the Flathead River in northern Montana when we were, you know, exploring Glacier. Those are songs about friendships that crash and burn. Those are songs about real shit that goes down in marriage and uh, about growing up in big, crazy family and growing mm-hmm. up on a farm. And I'm, I'm of the opinion that if you're going to take somebody's time, to say something, then say something. So I want my music to cut through all of the typical cliches and the shit that you hear every single radio station. It's just so predictable. I'm like, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, but I'm just trying to sing from an honest place. And I love so that. That's awesome. Yeah, that, yeah. that is. And I'd like to make an observation right now because you weren't looking at her, but I was. If you could see the look your wife was just giving to you during that little speech, <laughs> I've might, never I seen love before the next I've podcast. Never, <laughs> just, just, I've never, I have never seen right. love so singularly personified in the look than what I just watched her when you were talking, man. It's amazing. This is a true story. So this goes, this is, we've had this topic a number of times because I've had Seth play some house parties for me and we sit around, we have 30, 40 people sitting around and half the time we were watching Seth and then half the room is watching Desi because she's just Watching like, Desi, watching him. Yes. Right. So now here's the thing too, if you guys don't know, She's part of the duo now. So they play music together. And for me, it's so cool because I used to watch her watch him. And even my sister goes, that's not real. That can't be real. <laughs> she loves him so much. That, that's not a thing. And I'm like, oh, sis, I think it is, you know? And then my wife's watching. We're all just watching her go, man, she really loves him. So for me, it's so cool. And I got to see him play for the first time last night at a private party. And now I get to watch them both. And she's still watching him. It's unreal. Um, but and and I see it just now. I, mean, I love that reaction because, I, like I said, I've seen it so many times. Yeah. People are like, "Are you watching this?" Like she's staring at him. Like this is the first time she's seen him play. Yeah. And Bravo, me, you two. Play Bravo, more than anybody. Thanks. So, thanks for loving me, honey. I do. Yeah. All Give you plenty, of, I plenty yeah. of reasons not to. As a as a singer songwriter, um, I would like to play you an 18 second clip, if this is okay. Take me. Um, my nine year old daughter. Okay. Yes. I flew to Vegas two weeks ago. Okay, in the time I left the house, went to the airport, got on the plane, and landed, we're talking three hours, mm-hmm. she not, wrote this, sang it, and put a video behind it. You don't need to see the video, no big deal, but 
It's an 18 second clip. It's the beginnings of her very first song she's ever That's written. Great, man. I want to know your thoughts. You ready? Yeah, I want to hear it. All right. Better not be messing with me. Nine. Awesome. I'd say she nailed about 90%. The end's a little shaky, baby. Uh, come on, we've talked about it. But <laughs> your dad is too, too hard on you, I know. But it it's still gives great. me chills. Yeah. My baby girl, I mean, she put pen to paper, had no tune or anything in her heart, and that's and she came up with that. And then so cool, went man. as far as to put it on a video yeah, love it. with the words, you know, and then I was just like, you did this while I was in the plane? <laughs> that means it's a gift. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I'm just so. wondering, yeah, where she gets it from, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? I've got a pretty artistic bone in, 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 in right it. about there. I but, you know, I sang as a kid. I played instruments. Right on, I, you know, I do the radio thing and all this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to say it's from mom, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's a combo. That's it's, cool. It's yeah, definitely a combo. Yeah. But, you know, her sister, too. Her big sister is was big on it when she was younger. That's but, great. um, I'm absolutely encouraging and pressing her to move on with that. I'd like to see where this goes. Right on. Because that just, it floored me. I mean, I almost had to start crying in the middle of the airport when I landed and I had service. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is so amazing. And she's like, Daddy, this one's for you. And in a text, and it was attached. Yeah, and I was like, just I'm like, I'm keeping that in writing because yeah. I'm getting royalties on this. <laughs> <laughs> one day. We, we need another two minutes, though, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, girl? We, we, we need to continue it. But, oh, that's great. Yeah, I, just, I, I love the artistry and the culture and, and all that, man. It's That's great, man. absolutely amazing. Nick, I know it's crazy, but do you have a fast five of any sort? No, I don't. Okay, let's just, I'm not going to steal your thunder like <laughs> I did yesterday. <laughs> but so this is a segment that we do via Zoom usually. It's yeah. five fast questions. You can answer them or you can don't, whatever. They're not personal. They're not crazy. Sometimes they can be. Question, but uh, question. you guys can just join in. Just join in. Yeah, yeah, join in. So I'd cool. like, and, and I stole Nick's thunder yesterday yeah, because he, he wasn't he feeling totally well. totally threw me off. Dude, yeah. you're getting thrown off. I know. It's you got to keep the groove. Exactly. You stay in the <laughs> yeah. pocket. You gotta stay in the <laughs> pocket. <laughs> That's right. All right. If you guys could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be? This is definitely Seth Brown yeah. and Desi Brown. We had that conversation yesterday. What, what is we happening? Had that, listen, we had that conversation <laughs> yesterday. Sorry, this is going to be a long question. Because you drive downtown Medford and it says Chevy's opening soon. 1.5 yeah. miles. That like, friggin' sign's been there for it. what, 10 years? Yeah. I'm so, so I'm like, we can put your wait, billboard up there right so there. So Chevy's is not coming? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Damn, I think it's actually again. But like, it does that drives me crazy every time I drive past that thing. I'm right. Like, What's stopping us from one night just putting something up That's there? That's what I'm saying. A Seth Brown. This is what you put up there. Tell him. Tomorrow him. night? Tell him. Yeah, we put a big picture of Campfire Currency and a big picture of Desi's Diaries. Did you guys know my wife just released a full length, 343 page, all original novel last week in I, Chicago? I do now. <laughs> I That's shouldn't awesome. say Chicago, Illinois. Illinois. It was I outside of Chicago. Um, the first year we went on the road, we sold all our shit and hit the road in a van. We spent that first year, and as I was writing all these songs, she was journaling every crazy thing that happened. Right. And that first year, she ended up with over 100,000 words, and she got with an editor recently that is now a, a novel that just released. She's already sold probably 100 copies, and it's oh, wow. And it's, it's yeah, amazing. It. I actually physically held it yesterday. Do you have a copy and with you? And the, the feel of the book, you know when you get that feel and it's like the flat cover, oh, it's and it's like a mat, and the photo's awesome, Seth took the photo. Okay. Just in your hands, you're like, this is money. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not legit. in like the literal sense, but like know, good, yeah. sweet, yeah. awesome. It felt so yeah. cool. Nice. And All like right. you said, there's power behind something that's physically made with touch, too. Mm -hmm. She loves signing them and sending them out compared to them just ordering it on Amazon or something right. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really And cool. where can, about. you know, listeners and viewers get such yeah. copies? Of course. Desi'sDiaries.com with a Y. D-E-S-Y-S Diaries.com. And you can click right there. Or do you want, I'll sign it and put it in the mail to you. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, all right. This is not a paid promotion for Desi's Diary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but order. Yeah, but get it. Seriously, go buy one. And buy some merch. Dadcast.co. Exactly. Come on. Dadcast. Come on. Come on. Exactly. Come on. Come on. So we'd have her book and my album, which I was fortunate enough to release two years ago. It's a full 12-track, all-original record called Campfire Currency. Sweet. And those are songs and stories from the road, too. And... Uh, 
That was recorded. I was right? going to say, why do you call it campfire currency? But yeah, I already yeah. know the answer. <laughs> and then I just realized this is part of his five questions. And <laughs> yeah. That's what happens. It's, it's a good, good question. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I get asked that a lot, actually. And the campfire currency came from a conversation Desi and I was having um, where we realized after that first year of traveling, man, we ended up in different states, different campsites all over the country, man, from, from Big Bend, Texas National Park to, to Florida to, you know, northern montana right and everywhere we showed up i'm a little bit on the social side she's a little bit more reserved but we'd roll in and that spot other tents and vans and campers and whatever I'd be like let's get fire going you still hope packs in the fire and i'll go rally up everybody and see if they want to come <laughs> for some music so we would roll into a site no joke and i would go like knocking on people's tents and they'd be like what, well what are, who are you I'd be like, hey man we're having a fire some food bring a chair drinks we're going to be playing some music come kick it with us so this was a repeated thing that happened throughout our whole first year. We were talking one evening and I was like, you know, it's, it's cool. I was like, everybody that we meet out here, they, they all have something unique to bring. And I was like, it's almost like, it's like the currency you trade with out on the road. You know, people are trading art, people are trading food, people are trading drinks, people are just taking care of whatever need is there. And I was like, I feel like my currency, like my campfire currency is like, my music and then I was like campfire currency that's the name of the album <laughs> and I was like that just explained it's it. more than just the name of an album to me though it's a lifestyle it's a cool yeah it, it, it's uh, almost a defining you at least in this chapter of life right yeah I think so man I think it's it's very much uh, we've talked about it and it's like it's a campfire culture that we want to kind of take everywhere yeah and uh it's when you show up and you get a whole bunch of people that are busy. Life is crazy. Everybody's distracted. Everybody's overwhelmed. Everybody's trying to make it survive. And when you sit around a campfire and you start playing some music, that's when it's like the world sort of just stands still, sort of fades, and people are like, everything's going to be okay for you, even if it's just for that moment in time. That's awesome. Well, Seth Brown... Nick, I'm going to interrupt you. Music. We're no yeah. more. There's no more Fast Five. <laughs> <laughs> How about we uh, pretend there's a campfire happening right here, and you play us a song, a song yeah. that may or may not be appearing tonight Yeah. at your show, I if was, that's okay. I was thinking about this, and uh, there's a song. It's actually funny enough. It's one of Joe's favorite tunes I've written that he's heard so far. And uh, when we got on the road, life became pretty unconventional pretty quick. You could leave your your town, your people, your friend group, your social life, and you're just out there alone. And you think at seasons that friendships last forever and you get out in the world and you realize that not all of them do. So this next, or this, ta this song is a song about friendships that don't make it. And it's a song called Okay This Way. I love this song because I always uh, dedicate it to my best bud, Kurt. We all know Kurt, right? <laughs> You're still great, buddy. I still do, because it's a song about kind of, you know, friendships falling apart. Even though we're still best friends, I'm just waiting for that to happen. So I still like, this is about us in the yeah. future. We're going to break up one day. We're going to break up. <laughs> yeah, Here's your song. Yeah, definitely play for yeah, sure. Please, yeah, please. Yeah. Wish you the 
want you to know that I still love you. People move on, that's just the truth. See, I don't have any expectation on you, no, no. Well, all I'm asking is neither would you. Cause you went your way and I went mine. And I can still remember those good old times. I ain't saying I don't miss it, I'm just saying it will change. This way It's so good. I love it. Man, thank you. It's dope. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing man, absolutely. Yeah. Artist in his in his element, man. That was so good. I, we just missed the campfire, man. Yeah. I thought about lighting this table on fire for Burn a second. I, I, I did, but like, you better not. <laughs> he, ladies and gentlemen, is Seth Brown. She is Desiree, I mean, baby. Desiree, <laughs> baby. Is it Desiree Brown as well? It is. It's okay. The Seth Desi, Brown Desiree. Duo. The Seth Desi, Brown duo is what we're The Seth Brown duo. Yeah. You guys, you're beautiful, man. Thanks, man. Both of you. Just appreciate woof. it. Woof. And the way she looks at you. Woof. Yeah. And those eyes. Beautiful. <laughs> um, I have one final question, and I'm going to ask it, Nick, even though I have absolutely no business asking this question right now. But it may be funny or it may fail miserably. Okay? But here we go. I think it's yeah. going to work well, though, because of the backstory I know. They're going, what's happening right now? And the question is if you were to impart one bit of advice onto any new dad, what would it be? I think you can answer this well because of the experience, man. Any new dad. This is a bold move for me to be speaking right now. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And we should leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe just say, uh, you know, drinking is real. Don't give up. Keep drinking. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, man, it's, it's all going to work out in the end. Just keep your head down. <laughs> keep your head down. Keep on keeping on. Oh, yeah. keep all on, right. Baby. All right. Seth Brown, Des, the Seth Brown duo, Joe Moxley. Thank, thank you for you. having thank us you in your place of business. I love this place. It's beautiful. We'd love to do some more here in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting us. Nick Martin, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. I hope you get better. I got to say that every single there. time. We're getting there. We're getting close. You know, we've talked about his, his medical thing, but we're just going to leave that one alone. To everyone watching this episode, listening worldwide, check out the Seth Brown duo. Um, it, it, you just heard it. I mean, it needs more. You need, you need more of it in your life. Go check it out. And, of course, if you're watching on the YouTube, like it up, subscribe. Do all the good things, and we'll catch you on the very next episode. Everybody, thank you guys, man. You were amazing. That's awesome. Nice. Thanks for having us, you guys. You thank you. Thank you. you. So we meet up on the, on the desert outside Sedona. We got this huge campfire going. The kind where we're like, no gasoline <laughs> And uh, It's funny, but it's true. <laughs> 100% we have a video. <laughs> and uh, the, the, of course, the day turned to night, and we're all sitting around, and all of a sudden we just sort of realize that the sky, man, is just stars from horizon to horizon. I've never seen so many stars in my life. And uh, I was picking. She's like, yeah. I'm like, let me get my phone. I gotta record this. And uh, so right around that campfire that night, she captured this song on her phone. This one's called Billion Stuff. Stars open my 
my head tonight And I'm feeling alright I can't find a couple of friends in my wife Well you know this is my kind of life We got a couple old rigs parked out along some road Where nobody else wants to go Except a few of us that know I got a billion stars over my head tonight. I'm feeling alright. I can't buy a couple of friends in my way. We know this is my kind of life. Yeah. We got a couple old rigs parked down along some road where nobody else wants to go except a few of us that know. One more out of here. Out here we're swapping jokes and telling stories No self-service and none of them worries Just a billion stars over our heads tonight Are you feeling alright? <laughs> yeah, I'm not.